So for shy people, traveling is the absolute best time to practice that because you're never going to see this again if you embarrass yourself you're never gonna see these people again well it's more like i need to stop fighting against where life is trying to take me you can give yourself the right to be fully yourself and then when you see that you're accepted and that you love it gives you confidence and then you're able to just be yourself all the time in in the real world Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breaking Boy podcast. Today we are here with Florence Lilinski, I think. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And Florence, I'm not, it's, I've been saying this quite a lot because I've been doing quite a lot of sort of more unorthodox podcasts for me. I've, I've spoke to a lot of like psychologists and coaches and things like that, but recently we've been talking about more sort of everyday life, but I'm hoping today will be a good Day where we can bridge the, the two together so Florence I don't know much about Florence everyone other than that she travels around a lot and um yes yeah, so Florence I suppose the first question give a little uh sort of summary of what you've done in the last few years to get to where you are now and then we can go further back as we progress through the the episode first of all from Montreal, so the French part of Canada. And uh, I became a lawyer very young. So I became a lawyer at 22 years old. And then I worked in a big law firm. And that was like many hours, a lot of stress. And um, I really, really didn't like the experience. And um, that made me question my life decisions. And I really didn't know what to do with my life. So after one year of working there, I decided to go on a little three months trip in Southeast Asia. I didn't have a return ticket. And I went with one of my best friends with who I have traveled in, in Europe by the past. So actually we did a last semester abroad together in the UK. Um, Lovely. In Leicester. Ask me why. In <laughs> Leicester. I know. <laughs> really anyone that's ever been traveling has thought, let's go to Leicester. No, I'm joking. The, the law program was on everything. And it was like the year that they won some game. So it was. Um, but yeah. Is it 20, so, 2015? Yeah, it was. Leicester won the Premier League. So then. It was like the best. <laughs> That's cool. And um, so I went there with her. Uh, we did, I think, 14 countries in Southeast Asia. And. Um, Three, four months, she had to come back home because she had a, a internship for the bar to become a lawyer. And so she left and I said like, no, I feel like staying. So I stayed another three months. And during that time, I met a lot of backpackers who were doing a working holiday visa in Australia. So I thought to myself, after seven months, I should go to Australia for a little six months just in order to, you know, have like a work but travel mm. time yeah. before I go back to the real work. And also, I still had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. So I was like, let's just, um, yeah. And finally, I came back five years later. So when I left on that wow. three months trip, I came back five years later, um, which is just, I came back home one year ago. So, wow. so yeah. And my life completely there. I had to do farm work. So can you imagine me <laughs> doing no, farm work? I, I all sorts of jobs. Yeah. And I changed careers then. Um, so basically, I started documenting my travels on social media, especially on TikTok. And it kind of blew up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I understood how it was working and everything and then I did I came back to the studies and I did a diploma in Australia in media production in like film in order to become better at making content and then I landed my first job over there and then I was planning to stay forever in Australia but I lost my visa so we, we can talk about that in the mental health part uh, yep. it was like really horrible but we can talk about that later if you want 
And now I'm doing that here. So I'm based in Montreal doing social media uh, management for some companies. And I'm able to work remotely. So I just spent two months in Europe working from my computer from five different countries in Europe. Wow. Um, so it's like basically I built my dream life from Yeah. Here. No, you have. No. Loss. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, you've, you've crafted something, something we, we can talk about. You've crafted like your ideal life and, and now you're living it. So let's go back to the whole five years. So you ended up, what made you decide to not go back home? Why did you say, right, I'm, I'm staying here? Um, so, so my first year, I was in a working holiday visa in uh, Australia. And one of the um, mandatory things that you have to do is far work. So I said, of course, I'm not staying more than one year because otherwise I would have to do three months of farm work in order to stay a second year. Mm -hmm. But finally, I liked it so much. So I was like, I'm just going to do the three months of farm work at the end of my year in order to have the possibility to come back at some point. So I did that and then COVID happened. So was I was at the end of my first year working in a farm and then I also had a boyfriend from the UK actually uh, he was from South Shield and at first I couldn't understand anything that he would think yeah <laughs> like me like in a dating I was like this is not gonna work out because I literally don't understand anything <laughs> and my English was way worse back then so like yeah thanks yeah. to him and it was now I speak a bit more fluently no you speak um but yeah thank you but it actually it took so many years to be able to you know make jokes in another language yeah. you know be able to have fights or you know like just speak yeah. your true self there's always language um but yeah so okay so actually I had this boyfriend and then like Canadian government and everything they were like you need to come back home like tomorrow otherwise we cannot say we cannot uh, guarantee that there's going to be um planes going back to Canada so like you need to take your decision now My parents were calling me and they were like we're going to pay for your ticket like you need to come back home like it was just so crazy I cried the whole day because I was like I'm gonna say goodbye to my boyfriend yeah and never see Again. But yeah, so finally, I was just like, no, I feel like staying. But it was a really hard decision at the time because I didn't know if like everyone was going to die and I wasn't going to see my parents again. Yeah. Like it was really dramatic. Also, I was seeing all of the backpackers leaving like day after day. And I was just thinking, am I really stupid for staying in Australia? But actually, it was the best decision ever because Australia literally didn't have COVID. So during COVID, I traveled all around Australia. Uh, I didn't leave COVID and that helped me as well because I thought all these years that I'm traveling, anyway, people are stuck at home. So I'm not missing out on like career time. Um, it helps me feel better that I wasn't progressing in my career. Yeah, I, I had really nice words uh, and I was judging myself a lot for just traveling around and then building a career because that's what I was thought uh, since I was young. Yes. So yeah, so that's where I decided to stay and it was actually the best thing ever. Um, and I went to see my parents so three years and a half into my trip. Mm -hmm. I was able to go through COVID, go and see my family. And wow. I took all of my stuff. When I came back to my home, I took all of my stuff to move for real in Australia. Um, and that was so hard to say goodbye to my parents because then I was like, okay, I'm moving at the other side of the world. Um, and I cried for three days, like a heartbreak. <laughs> I bet, yeah. Because I was like, I'm... <laughs> I meet a lot of people nowadays that want to be lawyers and I'm like, why? Why do you want to be a lawyer? Isn't that just paperwork after paperwork after paperwork? Maybe I'm wrong, but you tell me why you wanted to be a lawyer and 
and then why you thought maybe this isn't for me um so like i just had good grades and i come okay. from like a rather conservative environment where my parents were like you can do anything you can become an astronaut a lawyer or a doctor <laughs> yeah. like i was very creative when i was young but it was not something that was encouraged um and i really love my parents i have a really good relationship with them and everything yes. but um especially my dad um like his parents lived the war and they couldn't study because of that and they were like kind of poor but they put all of their resources for their children to have the best education ever so that they could have a good life so for my dad it's like the primary Thing that you should go for it's education yeah. and yeah. it is and i think as well yeah. as a as a woman um who wears makeup and everything it's nice like it's very shallow what i'm going to say but it's it's nice to have that word that's associated to you so that people instantly think higher of you and you know whenever i said okay i'm a lawyer it's like oh okay you're not just a, a blonde who's smiling and giggling yeah. it's it's sad but it it makes a statement that you were able to go through hard studies yes and and I, I thing for being a big law firm, i worked in a big law firm as well i didn't really ask myself any questions i just knew that that was like the hardest point to get to and that was like the most regarded position so I just went for that. I didn't ask myself like what interests me or I just went for what is the hardest to get and I'm gonna prove that I can get it. Mm. Um yeah, and and Good. during that time Yeah, and it was very interesting and people were like good people at that law firm, but the work environment is a little bit toxic to my standards where you're expected to work like really, really long hours. You're expected to cancel your plans, to work on weekends, on nights. Uh, and I was just 22 years old. So I see all my friends having a life and I, I just wasn't able to do anything. And as well, the lack of sleep and the stress, I was just yeah, like no, really unhappy and that's nice. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and I didn't understand how I was going to do that for the rest of my life. Um, but at the same time, I didn't feel like I could do anything else because nothing else was as regarded. Or yeah. So, so do you think it was? You said you grew up in like a conservative environment, and that your dad was very status driven, which is fair enough. To be fair, would you say that it was? more a case of your environment that encouraged you to be that aspirational and to achieve something or was it did you think did you have I suppose the question a better question is were you achieving it for the the opinions of other people or were you doing it so that you could feel proud of yourself um I think both but I think for me my value was really uh, linked to my productivity it still is even though I'm in a completely different environment it's like yes. then if I achieve this then I'm worthy or mm -hmm. um, yeah yeah and I wouldn't say my dad is like status driven I would say he's like education driven he's he, he believes yeah. that career is also important thing and yes and it is I think it's really important, but yeah, like you need to find something that you're willing to do like several, several hours per day, which wasn't the case. No. I mean, not, and as well, in, it's a lot of, well, the law that I was practicing, it was a lot of research. So a lot of time just like alone in your office, it wasn't something where I had, I could interact with people yeah. and and that didn't suit me as well. No, no, I can't imagine. You need to. I can imagine you're someone that needs to be around people, engaging with them. Otherwise, things get pretty stale. What type of law was it? 
What was the second? Uh, so I was yeah in labor and employment law uh, on the employer side. So for big companies as well. So that as well was not. <laughs> yeah. But it was interesting, and most of the time I felt like the point was right. It's an interesting one because I think the stat. There's a statistic about like young men and young women who go into study law. It's inundated with young women. So they're, they are choosing to do law way more than, than young men nowadays. I think I read that somewhere. And it surprises me because the stereotypical male temperament lends itself towards being a lawyer way more than the stereotypical female temperament. And I understand it's a stereotypical one. But stereotypes come up for a reason. So if you want to be a, a good lawyer, you have to be quite disagreeable and you have to be willing to basically bargain for your own worth or the worth of your clients more than, I suppose, what the opponent, whatever the correct terminology is, the opponent. And if if you engage, if you encounter sort of a moral dilemma then a, a compassionate person is going to find that that quite hard so did you because you you seem like a very lovely sort of sweet kind person as well as obviously being highly highly intelligent and competent so did you find your conscience do you know what conscience means do you understand do you get what that yeah did you find that you're sorry i don't want to be rude but i just don't want to say a word and you go what has he just said? What does that mean? Okay. Oh, good. That's all right then. Yeah. Did you find that your conscience was being tested at times during the during your career as a lawyer, or was it not that kind of law sector? Uh, to be honest, no, it wasn't. Like my con- no. conscience didn't feel bad. I was. I think each side can be um have points to be defended and i n- I, n- I never thought that we had a file where i felt like really horrible i i thought yeah like there's good points um but i'm not working in criminal law like if no. if i was working in criminal law i don't think i could do it like uh, defend no. the rapist or something i think that that I yeah not of course yeah it, but no no that's fair enough fear. You need to and be a proper... Also, in terms of... Sorry? No, no, carry on. I just want to say one thing that I got from working labor and employment is that um, a work relationship, so with an employer and an employee, is a bit like any relationship, like any friendship, any love. It's, it's a fit so sometimes if like someone is not good at, at their job or it doesn't mean that the employee is not good or like it, it's a fit. And I think it makes it so easier to see things like that. Like when people are not feeling well in their work, they're not necessarily the problem. Like maybe it's it's a fit problem, just like any relationship. Like you cannot be friends or in a love relationship with anyone, you know? Yeah. So I thought that was like just concept that I, I got from from uh, working with these relationships. Let's talk about your traveling and then we'll get onto like more of the mental health sides a bit later once we have a little bit of a lighter conversation. What has traveling taught you about yourself and about the world and the the importance of uh, escaping your comfort zone, I suppose. Um, so many things. I think first thing is adaptability. So I was always, always moving um, from spot to spot. So like just now, I just moved in a new apartment and I didn't have any period of time of like, adaptation it was just like mm. okay now I live here I don't know it's just like I any, or when when I um when I lost my visa in Australia 
I lost everything at once. So I had to quit the country. So I lost like my vision of the future, my apartment, uh, my boyfriend at the time, uh, my job, because I couldn't be there. Like, so I came back home with nothing. And three months later, my life was rebuilt here, even though I didn't have a plan. It was a surprise. Three months later, my life was rebuilt here. So it's just, it allows you to do something from scratch. Like, so that's the first thing with traveling. Second thing, it gets you out of your environment. So you get to meet people that you wouldn't normally meet. You really expand your thinking. You become less, not less judgmental, but you, like, I've yeah. met a lot of different people who do some even taboo things. And I'm just listening and being open to what they are, what they do. Um, and it doesn't mean I'm going to apply it to my life, but it, it just makes you more understanding of everything, everyone. And then you get to pick the best out of everything. Yeah. To put it into yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I agree. Um, otherwise, well, you just get to learn a lot about the world. You know, if you see some news about Canada, you might not be interested because you've never been there. But when you've been to so many places, you're like, okay, I've been there. What? There's been a change in president. How come? It's just you become even more curious about the world because you now have a relationship with small parts of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, as well, I'm a very opportunity driven. I don't know how to say that, but... I was sleeping in hostels for a while and you meet people and let's say I meet a girl and she's like, Hey, I'm going on a boat tomorrow. And I'm like, okay, I'm packing my stuff. I'm going with her. Like, it's just, you become open to anything yeah. that's happening. Yeah. And a lot of people tell me you're so lucky. And I'm like, it's cause I ask it's cause I like put myself out there. Yes. If I see something, I'm like, Hey, can I come? I'm not passive. I'm like trying to be a yes girl and make the most out of like any opportunity, any situation in a good way, like with everyone being consenting, but <laughs> you know, uh, and I, I just lived so many crazy things. Like I can give you an example. Please do. Um, I yeah, like I was in Rome and we were trying to find a mountain um, to go see a sunset. So we had to find a mountain before the sunset. So we're like walking and then I see a priest and I'm like, hey, do you know where the mountain is? You know, I was just like straight away, okay, a priest. Do you know where the mountain is? And he's like, actually, I'm I'm going over there. So I'll I'll show you. I'm going in the same direction. And then we talk and he's like, actually, do you just want to come on the top of the monastery? So he brings us on the top of the monastery, which is like a private things for priests that has like a 360 view on Rome. And like we spent the night until like 2 a.m. talking with all the priests in like this unique location with a view on Rome. And it, that kind of stuff keeps happening all the time. Yes. So yeah. There I that's no that sounds really good. So you're you're spot on. So two things I want to sort of talk about that. One was there's a saying in I don't know if you've got it. There's a saying in English which is if you don't oh, it's not really a saying actually, is it? It's just like a phrase. It's if you don't ask, you don't receive, or if you don't ask, you don't get. And it's kind of mm -hmm. sort of like a sort of thing you say to is it the sort of thing you say to children? No, it's not actually. Sounds like it is, but it's not. And what you're talking about there is literally just that. It's in life, there's such benefit to putting yourself out there. And some people find that easier than others. So extroverted people, you you clearly seem quite extroverted, which means you're pretty enthusiastic about life. And that's a really, that's such a great asset to have. And some people aren't as extroverted and it's harder for them. It takes more oomph. 
and maybe more courage for them to to go and approach mm-hmm. someone like that but i do think that's a really good lesson that you've just been speaking about how putting yourself out there asking ma- making the first step taking the first step is a great way of not just building yourself as a person but also encouraging other people around you that you because every time you do something like that you you put the emphasis back on the other person so that priest says oh okay well yeah i I could take these people up the the monastery or whatever and etc etc so you're in your maybe enlightening is not the right word but you're what are you doing you're elevating maybe not but you're enhancing their uh, opinion of the world or people maybe and you're giving them an opportunity to show you like to show you kindness and you're also receiving something in return and you're also improving your your confidence as well at the same time so i i I wholeheartedly agree that if you feel shy in life and a lot of people do really feel shy like confidence is not an easy is not a what would you say it's not always the easiest thing to come by but it's an incredibly great asset to have but you can build it and that's why it's so good that you or not so good because you know but it's really beneficial for you that you went out and and did that and that was a lot of probably a lot of waffle that wasn't it but we'll go with it no but okay i want to point out something so for shy people traveling is the absolute best time to practice that because you're never gonna see these people again if you embarrass yourself you're never gonna see these people again like traveling really allowed me to be more myself like i pulled all the social um expectation of everyone yes yeah by removing myself from the environment and it showed me as well who i truly was like without all that without the barriers yeah yeah, and, and being able to just be absolutely yourself and knowing, like, if you embarrass yourself, you're probably never going to see these people again. So you, you can give yourself the right to be fully yourself. And then when you see that you're accepted and that you're loved, um, then you it gives you confidence and then you're able to just be yourself all the time in, in the real world. I think I was quite a bit a people pleaser and I I also had that idea that as girls we were more appreciated in society if we were like making ourselves um yes feel yes. Tall, I know you just be yeah. real and I actually have like a really big personality and mm. I was able to express more of that while traveling and I saw that it was well received so it gave me the it gave me the right to just be myself in the world Um, yeah yeah no i really like that and and you this you touched upon two things one was when you said the sort of the female expectation of being sort of meek and uh quiet and and that is i've never actually thought of it in that sense but i i do get that but it's a true shame because i mean i think it's it's there's there is some truth to that but there is the other side which is that sort of the sociability and social butterflyness is something that tends to be associated with women in, in my opinion and i think well that's probably because women tend to be more extroverted which means they're more interested in in people but this it is a shame if we are going down the route of that sort of expectation being damaging because there there isn't anyone in my opinion there isn't anyone that's better to be around than a sort of enthusiastic outgoing woman i always get that wrong woman who is sort of just like a ray of sunshine i sometimes i meet and don't like judge me for this but sometimes i meet people and you, you get like a vibe from them don't you and the vibe that you get from a what would you say happy go lucky i don't know if you know what that means what's speak proper english only what does that mean in real words happy go lucky 
No, no. Uh, like uh, I went with such shield vocabulary for a while, so <laughs> you can. Okay, talk. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I use some uh, Newcastle vocabulary, like a uh, lass. Now it. Um, yeah, happy-go-lucky sort of woman who just sort of like bright is just sort of there and present, and it's like, wow, you're a re- you're a powerful being. You are. You have something that is something that men can't men can't touch that it's like uh they can't compete with it it's exceptionally powerful so it is a shame that if women do feel suppressed in that way that they don't that they don't realize that they have that in their arsenal um i just want to say that when i was in australia and my parents were calling me every day like what are you doing with your life like what's happening give us an answer like when are you coming back home yeah. what are you doing with your career you're like you know what's happening um i started psychology mm. and she told me and it was like a really a really good one and she good. told me follow what feels right i know that sounds very cheesy but that's what i did and it led me to where i am now which is mm. the like absolute best i mean the there's still struggles sometimes, like about, of course, you know, always will be life, and I still, um, and everything. But like, just be curious about what's gonna happen and follow what feels right. Follow what you feel like doing. Um, obviously, if you have like addiction problems and stuff, like maybe that's not the way to go. But you know, follow what feels right. And for me, that was the best advice. Just have like faith that everything is going to be okay, and it it, it all worked. Mm. Yeah, really, yeah. Really work. okay. Let's talk about you seeing a psychologist and that thing that you said that happened that you wanted that we were going to get on to earlier in the call. Um. Well, that that was pretty much like the biggest takeaway from it. It was follow, follow what feels right. Okay. Um. And then it was it was good. Um, so then I made the decision to really move to Brisbane because then I, so I was there five years. So I had the UK boyfriend, then, um, it stopped, uh, because he wanted to go back to the UK and I was like, I'm not going in a rainy country. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, and finally he's still in Australia. So I look, <laughs> and yeah. No, no, no. But it was a, that that was that was good. Like I don't think we were meant to be with each other, and I'm very happy for him and everything that's happening for him. Good. And then I met another Australian boyfriend, and I uh, was with him. Um, and at the end, I was like getting a visa from him to be able to stay. Well, it was not from him. It was like because we had decided to build a life in Australia together. So we went on a partner visa and, and when we broke up, that's when I had to, to leave. So what happened is that, um, for the past, maybe like, let's say the, the six months before the relationship breakdown, um, it was like the most distressed I have been my whole life because, um, there was a lot of signs of him being dishonest and, uh, but I was at the other side of the world in his environment, uh, with surrounded by his friends, surrounded by his family who had him in really high regard. Mm. And so I was thinking that I was completely crazy and that I was ruining a good relationship. And what was really, really horrible was that I knew that if this relationship was, um, it, like if I was right in thinking what I was thinking, that would mean that I was losing my whole life as I knew it at the time, because I would lose the visa. Do, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought maybe I'm becoming, you know, crazy because there is so much pressure on the relationship because my whole living situation relies on a partner visa. Mm. You oh, know, wow. Okay. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a tricky situation. Yeah. So, so it was, I was in such a distressed environment mm, for six months prior to finding out he was actually being 
dishonest and unfaithful and everything. So I learned that he wasn't faithful. So I broke up. And as a result of that, I had to go back home and quit the life. Like, you have to understand at that time, it's like if I'm telling you tomorrow your girlfriend cheats on you and you have to move to another country. Like, it was honestly so horrible. But actually the moment that I found out, um, it was kind of a relief. It was horrible, but it was kind of a relief because I was like, okay, like, I, it, it, I'm not, I, I wasn't crazy. Um, yeah, I wasn't crazy. It was true. And, and after the relationship as well, I was able to retrace even more stuff that mm -hmm. I understood, like, okay, like, why was I even, why did I not end that earlier? But all that, a, um, I think like really traumatizing uh, um, events can lead to something even better. Like I, I didn't want to go back to Canada, but finally I'm here and um, it's even better because I'm close to my family and I'm still able to travel with the work that I found. Uh, I found a really, really healthy relationship um, and it's just like it all worked out. So sometimes you just have to follow like where life is bringing you. Like when that happened, I, I really, really tried to stay in Australia. I hired, uh, I went to see immigration lawyers and uh, my job tried to sponsor me. Uh, like we tried everything for me to stay. And at some point I was like, I need to stop fighting. I, I just cannot stay and I need to just let myself yeah. um, heal and move on. Well, it's more like I need to stop fighting against where life is trying to take me. Okay. Okay. I just need to, once I accepted that, I was just like, I'm going to figure it out. And three months later, like my life was rebuilt. And, and I think my life was rebuilt so fast because of traveling, because I'm used to changing environment completely, changing jobs, Ch like it's just, it's now a skill that gives me so much confidence that I'm like, if I, I lose everything again, that's fine. Cause I know I can rebuild it. Like it, when you go through really bad stuff and then you're able to surrender or you're able to, yes, yes. Then yeah, it actually gives you a lot of confidence. So maybe you're just someone who is capable of going through an adverse, difficult experience, shaking it out, so to speak, and then you're okay. You sort of, you you carry on. I don't know, but um, ego death is a slight technical so. term, but yeah, pardon. No, but I don't think so. Like I do like. I'm sad like whenever I need to but I do think whenever there's something that I'm sad about I talk about it until everyone's tired of me talking about it and then I feel okay <laughs> yeah so like I, I am very sad whenever sad things happen but then I'm able to but I do think as well you have to go back to what traumatized you like I uh, started the relationship that I'm in quite fast after this and I really didn't mean to it just happened that we just got along so well and I was like oh I'm not ready but then I was like well we're spending all of our time together and we have so much fun and it's super fun so let's just um... yeah. but the, the the other relationship it was super nice at the beginning as well so I was like I know that it can change um, but actually now it's been like nine months and it's just really, really nice. And that as well um, helped me because I still had that fear that I was part of the problem. Um, well, very probably I'm not perfect. So I was contributing to the dynamic, um, you know, the, the bad dynamics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is really horrible. But um, it helped me to go back in a relationship, actually, 
and to find out that I was able to have a really nice relationship that is not um, toxic, distressing. Because like yeah. really, the state of distress that I was in, I've I'd never been in such a state of distress. Like I was the, uh, I was like vomiting from anxiety. Um, I was like really really skinny. I was um, like shaking sometimes. Like I've never had the um, physical symptoms before yeah. in my life. Or something and 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 I was even seeing a psychologist by back then because I thought I was the problem. But all that time, it wasn't the case. Um, but yeah, it's just horrible when you think you're the problem because you think even if I leave the relationship, I'm the problem. So I'm going to bring that in something else. Um, but then I don't know. Do, do you guys experience that to be with people who are like, you know, liars, they tend and who are like super nice in the beginning, but then they change. I feel like, yeah, my, my guy friends don't report such actions from, from girls, but maybe they just don't talk about it. Um, I, I, I don't know, but it's maybe just my guy friends. <laughs> I, I think young, young women, I've, I've spoken about this a lot on different podcasts. I think young women tend to be, well, it's not even I think, it's, it's well known that young women tend to be drawn towards men who are more narcissistic than older women. And that's a well-documented part thing in psychology. So people, and I have my ideas on why that is. I think it's got something to do with confidence and competence and the mismatch between confidence and competence. I think it's got something to do with Oh god, you could literally do eight fifty eight podcasts on this. But do I think men have do I think guys have that? Sorry, yeah, okay. Say yeah. something what you said about confidence. No, 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 sorry, I'm interrupting you, but the confidence Hi. thing is true, is like I was having like the that, that's another thing, like trust your gut, but I was like having physical symptoms that this is not okay, but I didn't have enough confidence to be like, yeah, I'm right. I was like, no, I am wrong from for experiencing all this. I need to fix myself to, so, so yeah, I, I think it's a confidence thing. Cause I think now if I do experience that in any relationship where I'm vomiting because someone is coming home at 5 AM, uh, you guys, anyway, if, if I'm experiencing that again, um, I will not need proof to leave the relationship. I will just be like the way that I feel it, even if something is happening or not it's really not fun so cut it right now I think because of the visa thing I was in such a vulnerable situation where you know I was losing a lot by losing that that that's a reminder as well to really keep your independence and and not put yourself in a vulnerable situation with someone unless you're really sure about them has the go with the flow ever fallen has it ever sort of blown back in your face backfired on you or has it really always worked because i'm intrigued well there was part where i was lost where i had to just think like okay but so the thing is i am a very like um, I need to always be productive. So yeah. When I was struggling, yeah. I was in like with, like I was visiting twelve temples per day, and I was like, okay, I need to make the most of every single day. Um, I that. Yeah. But still, in a failure because I wasn't having a career during that time. But we, like, you have to go with the flow. But while doing the most you can of you can of your day okay i like you know yep yep, and, yep. Uh, so you need to follow what feels right like let's say i followed i decided to stay in australia during the pandemic and then i was like holy moly i'm able to travel while everyone's stuck at home and as well 
all of the touristy activities were so cheap. All of the hostels were so cheap because there was no no backpackers coming in. So I was just like, I just feel like I'm always wow. so lucky. And when you have that thinking, just like so many things and opportunities start happening and you just have to follow the opportunities. Um, so go with the flow is not stay on your couch. Like go with the flow is like, always be aware of opportunities and take them and see where it leads you. So let's see, I'm going with the flow was I went on a Asian trip. Then I felt like staying there. So I stayed there. Then I met, um, people who were going to Australia. So I went to Australia. Then in Australia, I felt like staying because I had a boyfriend. So I stayed. Then I thought to myself, I want to live forever in Australia, but I can't practice as a lawyer in Australia. And I don't think that I want to do it. So I need to or study again to do my equivalences or um, change. I wanted to see in Australia. I needed a student visa as well. So that forced me to change careers Um, because I wanted to stay with that boyfriend at the time as well. So I did a student visa. Thanks to that bad relationship, I changed careers. And then thanks to the relationship being yeah. bad, I came back to Canada with a changed career. And now I have a career that's super nice where I can still travel while having this career. And I met uh, my boyfriend, which was going really well. And so it's just like, it literally... Every single time I followed the lead, it brought me to where I am now, which is super nice. So I don't regret anything. I don't regret even the the bad relationship because I'm just so grateful that thanks to that, I changed careers. And then thanks to that, I'm back home. If it was a wonderful relationship, then I would not see my family anymore or maybe once every two years. So it's just everything happens for a reason. Everything goes well. I do want to see as a young woman, like your first day. Uh, first of all, I'm not that young. <laughs> uh, I'm almost 30. So, I was young. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I would say as a young woman, I think you still have to be on your guards, like regarding to your security. Yes. And, but you also have to be, ha- um, not you have to be. No, actually, as a young woman, there's a lot of stuff that you have to do in order to be well perceived by the society. Um, and so in that regard, I think that I have a privilege because I know I'm not the like most beautiful person on earth, but I still have like a privilege of kind of like meeting the standards. And so that does give you opportunities in life um so i think that's an advantage for like i don't know i'm trying to answer your question no i know it's a very difficult question i i appreciate you it's definitely an advantage in the current society um but the 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 back side of that is that people will assume that you're maybe like less smart if you're smiling if you're um like a lot of girls have said like whenever they cut their hair short they're being talked to in a in a more uh professional way um people just assume that they are smarter um so i don't know i just still feel like people are basing their judgments on appearance appearance yeah. And that's affecting more. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. No, I, I think but, uh, with with regards to professional possible development, as you said, you've had to work harder to achieve possibly same levels of respect. I would say in sort of response to that, but not that, but being also highly being a very attractive is an advantage in in a different way and unfortunately we as people lack 
the we tend to lack the ability to perceive things with nuance and with subjectivity so just going back to the whole thing we spoke about earlier with the sort of the cycloptic viewpoint we have a site where a stereotypical viewpoint of if someone looks like this they're like that and it's hard for them for us to see them in a different light and that's kind of part of that's what maturity is and that's what sort of education is is to merge the two or to see things not for not through the lens of our sort of uh discriminatory way but to see things to be more open-minded but um yeah i get you i i I agree with all that to be fair good answer and it's it's the check as well like for men or for girls if the person meets the beauty standards uh we're gonna assume more good things about them and as well that reflection like let's see let's see you're like a model and people assume really good things about you hello then that's your ref- the world so then you become that you know so um yeah i i don't know i just i just think with social media, it's really good that there's more representation so that more people can get uh, representation and our definition of beauty is changing um, so that there's there's no unfairness regarding to that point. 